Howdy everybody in YouTube land. What we have in front of us today is the power supply all taken apart on the SGI-02, otherwise known as the Weatherstar XL. So in our previous video, we went through and did an analysis and overview and all that stuff. Well, this video, we're gonna do the preventative maintenance to get it working. And yeah, so the SAT scan board had this DIN connector power. So I removed that. I just kind of shoved it off to the side in here because this requires some weird nine volts AC. So I removed that and what I did was I drilled a hole on the side of the case so I can run some wires out and I mounted this transformer in. So I now have AC voltage for this transformer and the primary is all wired in down here so that way I can plug the power in and it runs both the transformer and the O2 machine. But power supply is out right now because I am in the process of recapping the power supply. So what we have here is the layout and it's there's quite a few of them in here. Um, I only see one or two of these showing signs of leakage and this capacitor here was one of them so the trouble is this cap alone was over ten dollars the prices of components these days have gotten astronomical so i have like 30 something dollars in caps alone just for this power supply and you know most of these are probably still okay considering when it was made but I'm just going to do preventative maintenance because it's not like I can get service parts for those machines anyways. And what I when I can, yeah, it's super, super expensive to get parts for these machines. So I'd rather err on the side of caution and get this done. So um, I believe I have all of my parts right here and ready to go. So I need to start separating them out. That is my 1,000 at 6.3. Are these 1,000? No, these are 10,000. There's four of those, so one, two, three, four. Okay, we got that. Um, let's see, 680 at 16. Nope, that's not the right ones. Oh, there's multiple orders in here. Uh, let's see, 16 volt, 100 microfarad. Um, anyways, I'm going to start going through these, and then we're going to get it all out and we're going to start recapping it so i got this board almost done this cap here i couldn't do anything about because the one that i bought is way too fat unfortunately and the trouble is that's the only one i could get because of the supply chain issues so i figured oh maybe it's close enough well unfortunately it's not so i had to leave this one back in the problem with this one is yeah, I don't know. I, I can't find one. I'm stuck with it. So I'll just leave that for now. Uh, I have the rest of them done. So now it's time to move on to this module here and let's get that one done. All right. So I got the control card, you know, recapped. Some of these caps were larger than the originals because I tried to keep the BOM simple. So I laid them down and I also laid this one down to keep it away from the heat of this transistor because the two were literally right next to each other and that's a that's a recipe for disaster i mean it lasted this long but you know uh now it's time to get the card put back in here and get it soldered together and we got to get it back together now this broke on me so i got to figure out how i'm going to hold this in i have a thought but i don't know if it's going to work um because this can't push out on me otherwise you can't get it in there so we're going to take care of that right afterwards but for now we're going to go ahead and start getting this thing put back together i went ahead and took care of the solder joints on the top here too on this edge because there are some of them that were starting to crack and on this transistor here and there was one on the bottom somewhere this one was starting to crack so I just went ahead and took care of those I also restarted the transformer so now let's get it put together and then let's test this beast and see what the hell happens I'm just gonna go for broke and shove it in there and 
If it works, great. If it blows up, well, we tried. But I think it's going to be all right. So I got the power supply in there, or the boards in the power supply, and I had to fight with it because getting this module in, because you only have so much wire length, you kind of have to hold this cockeyed and get a screw in there started. You know, there's one down there that's got to go in. It's painful. Luckily, the fan's fairly simple. You just put the plastic standoff in, snap it together, and then the screw goes in on this end. But, uh, yeah, it's... That was fun to get this in there, but now it's in there, the fan's plugged in, so I have to figure out how I'm going to attack this. I think what I want to do with that is I might wrap a piece of VHB around this and see what it does. And yeah, I don't know, we'll, we'll have to play that one by ear. Yeah, I just stuck a little bit of tape up there, so it's... It's free floating on this side, but here it's going to be a little more stiff, but at least it's in there. So we're going to leave that alone. Um, at this point, we just, let's see, I'm pretty sure all we got to do is just slide these and those grooves just like that. And this just drops in. All right. Boom. Done. Covers on. At this point, it's just a matter of getting the screws back in without dropping them in the power supply. That would be fairly helpful. Looks like I need both hands, so I gotta put the camera down. All right, so screws are in there. Um, really, at this point, it's a matter of getting this in there. Let's see which way does it go. Okay, it's gonna go this way. Gotta be careful because the last thing I want is if something brittle. Well, it's now or never. Plug that in. Oh, well, this is on camera. This isn't, you know, I'm not doing this after the fact. So, is it going to work? Yes. Power supply came right on. That's got power now, too. Yes, it works. We are alive, Johnny Five. Well, uh, let's see. Let's take a look on the front. Do I have any LEDs on the front? I have a red one. But no other lights. Which I don't know what it's doing. We'll have to figure that out in a minute as soon as I plug a monitor into it. But, uh, yeah, um... That's it for that. Let me get a monitor set up and get all that done and make see what we got going on the screen. I've been goofing around with this for a bit and I can never seem to get the machine to turn um, green. It's, it's, it just always has the red power light. It just won't. Uh, see, now it doesn't even turn on. Ugh. All right, well, let's see. All right, see it's red. And actually, if we come back to the back side, we can see the red LED glowing in there. So let's see what happens here. It should go green within 10 to 20 seconds from what I've been seeing, but it's not. Hmm. No, I don't know, man. These SGIs, I tell you, I'm not very familiar with them.
Huh. Well. Okay. Let's put the hard drive back in it. I don't think that's going to matter. It shouldn't matter. It really shouldn't. At least I don't think it would anyways. TWC domestic drive zero. I don't have drive one. I don't know if it matters, but I do not have drive one. All right, let's try again. Hard drive you spun up. So it's doing something. I need to get a monitor plugged into this thing. Because really, who knows? It's not really doing anything still. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just went green. Okay. Yeah, it's initializing IRIX, I think. A lot of guesses here because I really don't know. I got to plug something in. Oh, yeah, listen. It's starting up. Yeah, we got, we got activity. There we go. Finally. Oh yeah, we're good now. All right, well, um, yeah, let's grab a monitor and double check because I'm not entirely certain, but uh, yeah, I think I can, oh, that was a close call. I just heard a click. Something just clicked. Is there a relay up in here somewhere? I don't think so. Maybe there is. Let me shut it down. See if it'll shut down. Because I don't want to. Last thing I want to do is crash the system. Although I did back up the hard drive, so. It's shutting down now, I think. Yep. It just shut down. So, yeah, it's definitely running. All right. We are good. I'm going to go ahead and. Start wrapping this guy up. I'll plug that sucker back in there. And uh, yeah, I think we're good. Let's uh, let's grab a monitor because I'm curious what's on the screen. So let's uh, let's do that real quick because once it goes back into the equipment rack, it's gonna not be able to do that anymore. So uh, we'll move that out of the way. I got too much crap going on here. Unplug you. I don't know where you're going anyways, but all right, so all right, let's uh let's make this happen. So I'm gonna go grab the um go grab the monitor real quick and get it all plugged in. Alright. Let's see. Got it all tangled up, of course. Why wouldn't I? It wouldn't be my life if things weren't tangled. All right, let's see. Luckily, it's VGA and not that screwball 13W3 connector. I hate those things. All right. Let's see, power. Okay, we got that. Set on VGA, yep. It's all right, power on. Nothing. I guess we're gonna have to go around again and press the button. All right. Do we get anything? Oh, I got a green. That's a... Wait a minute. It seems kind of oddball. Hmm. 
Again, I'm not familiar with the O2, so I don't know if that's normal or not. Oh, there we go. Sink on green, I can tell. There we go. That is a really good sign. It is not. Uh, the monitor is being a piece of crap, but I'm not surprised there. Irix 6.3. Picked up the PCI card. Turn the power off and back on, let it resync. Yeah. Warning could not set in it, so who knows? Oh, there's no signal coming in. So it may not like that. No, it does not like this monitor at all. No, it absolutely does not. Oh no, never mind. It's just being weird. It's got to be a sync on green signal, and that's why. Because this monitor does not support sync on green. Because I've tried to use, I've tried to use this monitor with old Macs. It just doesn't work. Well then, I think we're gonna make this a successful uh, conclusion because it's starting up at least. Which means my recap was successful on the power supply. So the power supply comes right up, no faults. The little transformer I put in there works because I got a light now. Because if that transformer wasn't plugged in, I wouldn't get a light. So, all right. I think we're gonna end it right now. We'll, we'll come back if we see anything more than what we already have. Yeah, it never gets past this screen. I can move the mouse. You can hear it trying to do something, but it never gets past this screen. So after rebooting it a couple times, letting it sit, it will not move past that point. So I think, I think the install is just borked. It's just a corrupt drive or something. I don't know. I don't know anything about IREX. I don't know how to fix it. I'm going to have to do some research. And it might be too far gone, which means I'm probably going to need another XL drive that works and good luck finding that one so I might be EOL'd on this one we'll have to see I wanted to insert this into the video because um, I messed with this thing for hours and hours and hours prior to making or during the middle of making this video and I tried another hard drive with a fresh install of IREX 6.5 and it absolutely, no matter how hard you try, will not start the X Session Manager. It always shows up with the desktop and the mouse cursor. Now, what I did do was get into the serial console and I saw that it was doing a core dump trying to start the X Session. And since it was a clean install of IREX 6.5, it has the same behavior as the original drive, so that leads me to believe that it's a hardware. And if you look at this particular screen, it keeps throwing that Mace I2C error up every single time, even from a fresh power on. So that tells me that there's something going on with the hardware. Um, I tried the typical move the jumper, you know, reseed everything, take all the boards out, clean the connections, put it all back in there reseated the power supply, there's no change in behavior. So I'm thinking at this point that the motherboard has gone bad. And unfortunately, they're super expensive and hard to find. So there may or may not be a conclusion to this video, a follow-up video. It depends on if I can get parts. Otherwise, it's going to end up in a scrap bin because I have no spare parts for this machine. And I know this machine was working before I got it. But I decided to take the power supply out to do the routine maintenance. Unfortunately, it ended in this. 
I don't know why. I don't know why the motherboard spontaneously died. Um, it's, it's anyone's guess. I'm still learning the SGI architecture. I don't know anything about it. So thanks to some kind folks, they were helping walk me through on reinstalling IRIX and all this other stuff and typical troubleshooting practices and nothing works. It all thro it throws the same error every time. And when it tries to start the X session manager, it crashes because it's probably trying to initialize the GPU. And the other problem is the audio video card for the analog video inputs is no longer seen by the inventory either. So that leads me to believe there's either something wrong with the moose headboard, which is the back plane or front plane or the motherboard. But the front plane is mostly passive. There's nothing to go wrong there. So really at this point, I think the motherboard's just gone and it's you it uses the newer board and it's a thousand dollars on eBay right now for that board as, as of the making of this video so really it's I'm done I mean unless I can find another parts machine or someone that can help me out that's pretty much it for this machine so uh, sorry I didn't have a better conclusion but sometimes that's just how these things go but anyways I hope you enjoyed the video um, if you like the video, please leave a comment below if you have one, subscribe, you know the drill. So, thank you for watching, and until next time.